Good afternoon, Alan, and welcome to the Classic Motor Show. Hello, Graham. Thanks, thanks for that. I'm looking around the show and finding it very interesting. Um, the son of Sydney. Could, we know all about his cars. Can you maybe give me a little insight as to how your father ticked? It's difficult to say all those years ago, but um, there was always a gap between my son, father and son in those days, and so it was a difficult man to follow, really. And um, he was known as a governor by everyone. Yeah. And when he came into a room or wherever, he had that presence about him. Yes, yeah. And he was quite a difficult man to follow, and I always had that sort of approach, really. So, to... so you were sort of born into a father who was... Was he then building cars then? He was... Um, well, yes, that was, well, I was born in 1940, so in fact uh, the car started, the, the first specials were just before the war, and 46 after the war was the first cars, the J1 and the K1 came out then. And then he went on to build the production cars and eventually build 2,000 thereabouts. So, so what was it like living with a, with, a, with a father then who was building all these cars? Were you involved a lot? Well, I was away at boarding school quite a lot, unfortunately, and he wasn't the sort of person who'd sit down and discuss things with you. And he was away a lot, of course, but I do remember looking over his shoulder and looking at all the notes. He was always scribbling away, <laughs> and, there, and it was quite fascinating to see what he was doing, you know. But I was rather detached from him, as being away at school, and he never discuss, wasn't the sort of person to yeah. discuss. There was that gap between father and son a little bit. But, but you competed with, well with him, you know, no problem there. But you competed with him, didn't you? Well, many years later, when I was from the 20, when I was 20 years old, in the Monte Carlo Rally, he was doing it. I did actually beat him one year, but it's a bit of luck and draw, and that's with the, depends where the weather is and the different routes people converge on. So how did he take that about being beaten? Oh, he didn't worry at all. No worry about that sort of thing. There was never a rivalry like that. Could you see in the early days? I mean, I know you were very young, but could you see in the early days that the Allard company was going to be as big as it was no you couldn't have, no. You, no you couldn't see ahead there really and of course i realized years later that jaguar and big companies came out they had they went into production line we could never get a production line going in our arts and that was the downfall really the cost of building the cars every little piece it just wasn't cost effective eventually too much competition and of course my father was a racer at heart he really wanted to go racing. Yes. He never intended to build yeah, a huge yeah. company anyway. No, 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 and as no. he was asked to build cars, he did. And, yeah, and, yeah, they, and very good they cars too. Yes, they were mostly with the... Uh, you could build, it was sort of pedigree. It was race from race, racing, really. They weren't built for sort of road use. It's almost yeah. the other way yeah, around. Yeah. They were all sporty yeah, cars yeah, yeah. built for... He always had a fly-off handbrake and all <laughs> sort of things like that. Little, little things yeah, in the cars. Yeah. And because his mind was always to racing rather than production. Well, thank you very much for the information, Alan. Thank you for the interview. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.